Welcome to the CNIB Guide Dogs Class of 2022 Graduation Ceremony. The CNIB Guide Dogs logo features a dog with a handled harness. Hi, I'm Abigail and this is my buddy dog, Lindsay. The Guide Dog Graduation Ceremony will begin soon. An ASL interpreter signs in a separate window. Then, a 10-minute timer begins a countdown as a pack of seven puppies lazily sit together. One clumsily steps over three others as they lay in a row, while the others sit opposite them, looking adorably drowsy. Close-up shots of the docile pups continue as the timer counts down. The CNIB Guide Dogs logo is underlined by the caption, Class of 2022. The pups climb over each other in a pileup before one breaks from the group to follow a scent. Then two other pups meander off in a different direction. Abigail appears again with Lindsay, who perches next to her wearing a graduation cap and sash. Nine minutes! The puppy footage continues and focuses on a single pup who has strayed away curiously from the group. Another pup follows his nose nearby as the group cuddle together in the near distance. One of the pups perches up in the group and gives a dozy stare before Abigail and Lindsay return. Eight minutes. The puppy footage continues. The perching pup looks into the camera with dozing eyes and floppy ears. Close-up views show the puppies sleeping next to each other in the group. A pup takes some wobbly steps forward as another gazes into the camera from on top of their sleeping friend. Abigail and Lindsay appear. Seven minutes. The puppy footage resumes as the timer counts down. One puppy looks dozy before perking up and moving close to the camera for a sniff. Five of the puppies cozy up next to each other while they snooze. Abigail and Lindsay. The puppy footage continues. One pup explores alone before a friend breaks from the group to join them with a wagging tail. Five of the puppies slumber as the two explorers waggle around playfully.
some of the group rouse awake and sit up with sleepy eyes. Abigail and Lindsay return. Five minutes. The puppy footage continues with close-up shots of their drowsy faces. They nuzzle up close and look around with curious stares. Two pups take slow steps away from the group before one jaunts forward, then stops for a break. Abigail and Lindsay. Four minutes. The puppy footage resumes with a close-up of a lone pup. It sits and gives a searching stare as its friend circles the group with a wagging tail. One of the pups blinks with heavy eyes and sits among the sleeping brood. Abigail and Lindsay. Three minutes. The puppy footage continues. Two pups snooze soundly, nose to nose. Another takes some clumsy strides forward. One pup dismounts its sleeping friend, but another takes its place with a cuddle. Abigail and Lindsay. Two minutes. The puppy footage resumes. The pups sleep together in a furry bundle while another curious pup explores nearby. A friend breaks from the group with a bouncing stride and wagging tail. Abigail and Lindsay. The puppies return. One tuckers out next to its friends as others scamper forward in short bursts of exploration. The timer reads 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds. Ten. 
nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. The CNIB Guide Dogs logo appears. Hi, I'm Abigail, and this is my buddy dog, Lindsay. Welcome to the CNIB Guide Dog graduation ceremony. Here is our MC, Ben Mulroney. Thanks, Abigail. Hi, everybody. I'm Ben Mulrooney, a proud ambassador of CNIB Guide Dogs, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to our class of 2022 graduation ceremony. We are so happy you're here. Today, by the way, is International Guide Dog Day, a day to celebrate our furry friends who help people who are blind or partially sighted live their lives fully and independently, as well as the hardworking individuals who dedicate their time to raise, train and match guide dogs with their handlers around the world. I can't think of a more fitting day to celebrate CNIB Guide Dogs graduates and recognize everyone who has made these incredible partnerships possible. Please join me in welcoming CNIB Guide Dogs President, Diane Bergeron. Thank you, Ben. I'm so very pleased to be a part of today's celebrations. Congratulations to our graduates and to everyone who had a part in making these magical partnerships possible. CNIB Guide Dogs has come a long way since it began only five years ago. In April 2017, CNIB Guide Dogs was launched with only two puppies and two staff members literally working out of their own home. Just five years later, we've grown to include more than 150 puppies entering into our program. 52 guide dog teams working across Canada, 18 children partnered with Buddy Dogs from BC to Newfoundland, and six ambassador dog partnerships promoting CNIB guide dogs at every opportunity. We have 32 staff members now and growing, and we have 125 volunteer puppy raisers and boarders who collectively provide more than 350,000 volunteer hours every year. Our canine campus sits on 158 acres in Carleton Place, Ontario, and houses our dogs in advanced training. With our recent expansions, the canine campus now has the capacity to house up to 150 dogs per year. We are very proud of how far we've come in such a short time, but this is just the beginning. I would now like to invite John Rafferty, President and CEO of CNIB, to tell you more about our future plans. Over to you, John. Thanks, Diane. It's amazing to see how the program has grown in just five years. And I'm happy to see people from across Canada graduating with their life-changing partners today. I look forward to following everybody's journey. As CNIB embarks on the development of its next strategic plan, CNIB Guide Dogs will be integral to the organization's future. We are about to establish our own breeding program to significantly increase the number of dogs that we're able to train and therefore close the gap for those waiting to be matched with their guide and buddy dogs. Also, with the support from the federal government, we've launched an apprenticeship program for guide dog trainers and guide dog mobility instructors, which will uh, support us in training more dogs. At this time, I'd like to welcome the Honorable Carla Qualtro, Minister of Employment, Workforce Development and Disability Inclusion to bring greetings on behalf of the federal government. Hello everyone, I'm Carla Qualtro, Canada's Minister of Employment, Workforce Development and Disability Inclusion. I'm so honored that the Canadian National Institute for the Blind Foundation invited me to say a special congratulations to their guide dog and buddy dog class of graduates. To the distinguished graduates we are celebrating today, I want to thank you for the hard work and training you have done and for the life of service you are entering. I hope you know how transformative you'll be in someone's life. As a most trusted friend and guide, you will give someone with a visual impairment independence and the confidence to navigate the world safely and easily every day. For people with severe visual impairments or blindness, you may be their lifeline. I also want to say thank you to the kind and talented individuals who have trained you and cared for you. To Diane and the team, you've changed so many lives. As someone with a serious visual impairment, I'm acutely aware of the challenges and barriers that all the CNIB's guide dogs have helped people overcome. It's thanks to the advocacy and hard work of organizations like yours that Canada is becoming the inclusive, accessible country that persons with disabilities deserve. 
from the Landmark Accessible Canada Act to the Disability Inclusion Action Plan that our government is developing in partnership with the disability community, we're becoming a global leader in disability inclusion. Your work is so important to this mission. So thank you for five years of this incredible program and congratulations again to our graduates. The Government of Canada logo appears. Ben Mulroney. Thank you so much, Minister Qualtro. CNIB Guide Dogs believes that Canadians who are blind or partially sighted should be able to work with a guide dog at no cost to their partners. And now I'd like to welcome CNIB's Chief Development Officer, Gary Nensen, to recognize some of the very special people and organizations who supported CNIB Guide Dogs this year. Hi, everyone, and congratulations to all of today's graduates. And thank you to our puppy raisers and our puppy boarders. Your support is truly appreciated. In addition to congratulating all of today's graduates, we also celebrate our incredible supporters of the organization as a whole and of the Guide Dogs program specifically. And one of the gifts of uh, significant note is a tremendous transformational gift from Dolores Beck in memory of her husband Howard of $3 million, which is designated to support our future breeding program at CNIB, which we hope to have up and running within the next couple of years. Thank you so very, very much, Dolores. I also want to thank some of our other incredible supporters, such as the Government of Canada, FDC Foundation, Canadian Tire Corporation, and the thousands of other contributors across the country who have made an investment in the CNIB Guide Dogs program. Whether it's funding a puppy, becoming a monthly donor, supporting the launch of our breeding program, or lending support to the expansion of the canine campus, your contributions are having life-changing impact and the success of our program is made possible through your generosity and commitment. So thank you very, very much. Now, please join us in a virtual tour of the Canine Campus. Welcome to the CNIB Canine Campus. Our Canine Campus is located in Carlton Place, Ontario. The property became available in 2018. And the rural location gives us room to expand and provides lots of space for the dogs to run, play and train. An aerial shot shows our main campus building and a large free run area for the dogs to run and play in. Carlton Place is less than an hour's drive from Ottawa, making it very easy to access. The dogs come to this training centre between 12 and 15 months of age, after they've been raised by our volunteer puppy raisers across Canada. When the dogs arrive at campus, they spend around six months in advanced training learning everything they need to know about being a guide dog. Dogs run around an enclosure. Our training team are expert, certified trainers and mobility instructors who specialize in training guide dogs to International Guide Dog Federation standards. Now, as we move inside the CNIB Canine Campus, you'll see one of our dog pods on the left. Each dog pod is spacious and comfortable and houses up to four dogs. The fronts of the pods are made out of glass to allow the space to be filled with light so dogs can see staff coming and going and become habituated to day-to-day -day life in a working office. Leashes hang from a countertop. Right now, the campus can accommodate the training of up to 40 guide dogs per year. With support from our donors, we're planning to increase that significantly to allow up to 150 dogs for formal training each year in an effort to meet the need for guide dogs in Canada. Here you can see our open concept workspace with several dog beds located next to workstations. We have a number of staff members and two resident canine campus cats, Thelma and Louise, who come and go from this space. Our dog care and welfare team groom each dog regularly. And we also have an exam room where our team conduct weekly health checks. Here you can see one of our lead trainers, Ian, opening one of our customised CNIB Guide Dogs vans. These vans are specially equipped, temperature controlled vehicles outfitted with built-in space for the safety, comfort and security of our dogs while in transit. The dogs need to travel frequently for training so they can be exposed to different kinds of environments and these vans give them a safe, comfortable place to rest while they travel. As our training capacity expands, we need to acquire an additional five vehicles. We're now inside our arena space, which is currently under construction. Once complete, it will be a very exciting indoor city where the dogs can learn day-to-day -day safe travel with their handlers in simulated real-world environments. 
On the screen, we have a digital rendering of what this indoor city will look like. The image includes a variety of different elements that you might come across in a real city environment, including storefronts, traffic lights, curbs, and sidewalks. There are also areas for our future guide dogs to test out more challenging elements, like escalators and elevators, turnstiles, bus stops, subway cars, and even a simulated airplane cabin. This indoor training area will provide our guide dog team with the space to introduce, develop, and test the dog's understanding of obedience and the fundamental guiding tasks, all the while keeping out Canada's often extreme weather conditions. Having the ability to customize the training space ourselves will help the dogs become familiar with a wide variety of situations, including when to exercise intelligent disobedience, an essential skill that allows guide dogs to disobey the forward command to cross the road when a vehicle approaches. Once complete, this indoor city will be a game changer when it comes to preparing future guide dogs for the incredible work they do. Thank you for supporting CNIB Guide Dogs. You're helping make the future bright. Visit cnib.ca slash gdurgent. The CNIB logo. Ben Mulroney. As Gary mentioned, donors, sponsors, and funders stepped up in a very big way to make these partnerships possible, and we can't thank them enough. At this time, I'd like to invite CNIB Guide Dogs Manager of Guide Dog Training, Ben Francis, to take us behind the scenes and tell us how the dogs are trained to guide people who are blind or partially sighted. On the screen, a trainer and guide dog in training are walking into the CNIB K9 campus. Dogs in the CNIB program enter formal training at 12 to 16 months of age. The trainer is giving encouragement as the dog walks through the office into a bright and spacious dog pod. The team aims to ensure that each dog has a positive experience when first arriving in formal training. A yellow Labrador Retriever is lying on a dog bed in the office space. Each dog is assigned a specific trainer who builds a bond. Bonding exercises include playing, grooming, feeding, and of course, cuddling. Inside a dog pod, three dogs are playing. Playtime is essential to the dog's mental well-being, and our team works to ensure that the play is kept positive and engaging. Regular playtime will help reduce stress and therefore prepare the dogs for learning. The three dogs sniff and circle each other with wagging tails. On the screen, a trainer puts a leash on the dog and begins obedience training. The dog and trainer must be able to communicate with each other and the dog must establish respect and trust for the handler. A group training session is taking place in an arena with multiple dogs and trainers. These situations allow for consolidation of the dog's understanding and willingness to please the trainer through a variety of exercises. Here, the dogs will develop self-control and leash manners in a space with added distractions. There are artificial obstacles set up strategically to be able to introduce and develop the dog's understanding of needing to leave space for the handler while moving past objects. This is carried out through repetition and positive reinforcement. A black Labrador retriever guides a blindfolded handler through a series of fences. One of the trainers is exiting the canine campus with a dog ready to train in real-world environments. They approach one of our custom outfitted training vans. Although the dogs are always keen to get going, the trainer demonstrates how the dogs enter and exit the vehicles while maintaining good leash manners. A trainer is introducing a dog to the body piece of the harness which will eventually enable them to safely guide their handler. A positive association with the harness is crucial. The trainer rewards the dog with food after equipping the body piece of the harness. A trainer and dog on leash, wearing the body piece of a harness, are walking outside along a sidewalk. The dogs are taught to stop at every road crossing, indicating the curb edges by either sitting or standing. The behavior at this stage is often shaped and rewarded with food. Another trainer is shown with a dog wearing the body piece of the harness with the handle attached. As the dog progresses, the handle is attached and the road crossings are positively reinforced. A dog in a harness with the trainer approach a curb. 
To test the dog's understanding and strengthen the behavior, the trainer will intentionally follow poorly and actively interfere with the dog's guiding work. By walking over curb edges and walking directly towards natural obstacles along the way, praise is given when the dog compensates for these intentional missteps. A trainer is walking along a building line with upcoming obstacles that she is gently pulling the dog towards. The dog is given praise for using its initiative to steer around the obstacles. Eventually, the guiding ability can be tested when a trainer wearing a blindfold walks the dog. The blindfolded trainer is halted at a curb as the dog stops and sits. The dog is rewarded with a pat before they continue onward. A trainer and dog are entering a bus. Exposing the dogs to public transit such as buses and light rail is carried out regularly throughout training. The dogs learn their expectations of finding an empty seat and tucking out of the way clear of the aisle. The dog sits to wait as they exit the bus before being signaled forward. A dog and trainer enter a shopping mall. Dogs are shown how to navigate through indoor public spaces like malls, university campuses and airports and will need to be able to guide their handlers to specific objectives while ignoring environmental distractions. A dog and trainer enter an elevator. It's important for our dogs to be comfortable to enter and exit elevators safely as they may be a regular necessity for the dog in the future. A trainer and dog step onto an escalator. Guide dogs learn that escalators aren't so scary and can be a fun way of getting from one level to the next. The dogs are trained to calmly walk on and remain stationary until it's time to get off. A trainer and dog approach a staircase. The dog will stop at the top and bottom of all staircases, or even single steps, in order to keep the handler safe. A cautious pace is mandatory while moving up or down stairs, as going too quickly could lead to an accident. A trainer and a dog walk into a food court. In public settings, such as restaurants and cafes, dogs will guide their handlers to an empty seat and settle comfortably at their side. Good social behaviors are essential as these dogs have special privilege to be in public spaces like this where ordinary dogs would not be allowed. Now we are back at the canine campus. Three dogs in a pod are let out into a free run area covered in snow. Once out of harness and back at the canine campus the dogs get to let loose and expend any leftover energy as they would do at home as a working guide dog. A very special life indeed. The three dogs race together through fresh powdered snow. Ben Milroney. Thanks so much for sharing. It is a fascinating process and I'd like to give a shout out to the CNIB Guide Dogs team members who love what they do from start to finish, from the moment a puppy starts training to the day the dog is matched with a perfect partner. Their passion for what they do goes beyond teaching guide dogs how to do their jobs. It's about helping Canadians living with sight loss regain their confidence, their independence, and their freedom. It is everyone's hope and wish that our pups in training will go on to become guide dogs. But the reality is not all dogs are meant to be guide dogs. Just like people, dogs have different aptitudes and they are destined for different careers. To help transform our communities into beacons of accessibility and inclusion where everyone can live, work, and play without barriers, our dogs have two other career options if they do not become guide dogs. They can become ambassador dogs and buddy dogs. A CNIB ambassador dog is partnered with a staff member or volunteer to promote CNIB guide dogs at community events and raise awareness about the role of guide dogs, whether it's introducing someone to the benefits of guide dogs, making presentations at schools, libraries, and retirement homes, or connecting with individuals who may be interested in sponsoring the program, this dog has a very important role to play. And then there are CNIB buddy dogs. A CNIB buddy dog is partnered with a child or youth who is blind or partially sighted, and whether it's feeding, grooming, or walking this well-trained family pet, a buddy dog provides a child with an opportunity to care for a dog and may make it easier to transition into a guide dog partnership in the future. Our buddy dogs may not have been destined to be guide dogs, but make no mistake, their impact on children living with sight loss and their families is profound and life-changing. And now is the moment we have all been waiting for. As I'm announcing the names, we'll be showing the photos of the graduates and their dogs. First up, our buddy dog partnerships. Phoebe Boyd is graduating with Ray, who was raised by Don McNeil in Nova Scotia. Congratulations, Phoebe and Ray. 
Keaton Hamilton is graduating with Indy, who was raised by Carrie McDonald, Saskatchewan, and Jennifer Beauchamps in Ontario, and generously sponsored by Dave and Tammy Piper. Congratulations, Keaton and Indy. Julian Mills is graduating with Victor, who was raised by Carol Badur in Ontario, and generously sponsored by Mary Weingarten. Congratulations, Julian and Victor. Joshua Moreau is graduating with Felix, who was raised by Jeannie Cahill and Tracy Best in Ontario and generously donated by the Dixon family of Glenannan Station Retrievers. Congratulations, Joshua and Felix. Abigail Waltz is graduating with Lindsay, who was raised by Nancy Heimstra in Ontario. Congratulations, Abby and Lindsay. And now our guide dog partnerships. Taylor Bauer is graduating with Wallace, who was raised by Rod Evans in Saskatchewan and generously sponsored by the Kramer family. Congratulations, Taylor and Wallace. Kaya Berg is graduating with Irene, who was raised by Emily Greenham in Ontario and generously sponsored by McMath Estates. Congratulations, Kaya and Irene. Denise Chamberlain is graduating with Jojo, who was raised by Kathy Owen in Ontario and generously donated by the Guide Dog Foundation in New York. Congratulations, Denise and Jojo. Michael Fulton is graduating with Eric, who was raised by Chris Wagner in Nova Scotia. Congratulations, Michael and Eric. Brandon Joy is graduating with Cosworth, who was raised and donated by Leader Dogs for the Blind in Michigan. Cosworth was funded by Wheels for Wishes and their community donors. Congratulations, Brandon and Cosworth. Jody Laycock is graduating with Shadow, who was raised by Lindsay Galley and Jennifer Barker in Manitoba. Congratulations, Jody and Shadow. Katie McMaster is graduating with Matilda, who was raised by Irene Burns in Alberta. Congratulations, Katie and Matilda. Megan Miller is graduating with Willie, who was raised by Emily Gratidur in Ontario. Congratulations, Megan and Willie. Aaron Parnall is graduating with Poppy, who was raised by D. Hedy Arachi in Ontario. Congratulations, Aaron and Poppy. Rylan Ross is graduating with Belle, who was raised by Mary Mahovlich in Ontario and generously donated by Leader Dogs for the Blind in Michigan. Congratulations, Rylan and Belle. Marc Saint-Onge is graduating with Magic, who was raised by Jeff Barr in Ontario and generously sponsored by Len and Vivian Racciopo. Congratulations, Marc and Magic. Marise Tiberge is graduating with Gary, who was raised by Cheryl and Jim Fizer in Alberta and generously sponsored by a generous donor. Congratulations, Marise and Gary. Jennifer Yagar is graduating with Bonnie, who was raised by Susan Uliot in Manitoba. Congratulations, Jennifer and Bonnie. Samantha is graduating with Rockette, who was raised and donated by Leader Dogs for the Blind in Michigan. Congratulations, Samantha and Rockette. Daniel Ouellette is graduating with Sparky, who was raised by Jane Dodds in Ontario and generously sponsored by John and Mary Crocker. Congratulations, Daniel and Sparky. Claudia Negrelli is graduating with Irwin, who was raised by Cheryl Dubuc of Alberta and Sarah Lapp of Ontario. Congratulations, Claudia and Irwin. Congratulations to all of today's graduates. Clips of the dogs and their partners throwing their graduation caps in celebration. More photos show the dogs in their caps with their smiling partners. At this time, I'd like to invite you to hear from some of this year's graduates. Hello, my name is Jennifer Yeager. I live in Niagara Falls, Ontario. This is my guide dog, Bonnie. She's a black lab cross retriever. We have been working together for about seven months now. She has helped me overcome a lot of obstacles and and the main one is my fear of stairs, which we are overcoming. Uh, she is just an amazing dog. Thank you. Hi, my name is Joshua Morrow. I'm from Bolton, Ontario. This is my buddy dog, Felix. He's a golden retriever. One special thing about him is he's donated blood. Joshua sits in an armchair with Felix at his feet. Something else I really like about him is he always sticks his tongue out in pictures and he's also good at cuddling. Hi, my name is Julian and um, I live in in uh, Moncton and this is my buddy that we do and um, um, he likes eating and he likes walking in um, in forest. It, um, he doesn't like winter and 
I like you, Victor. He hugs Victor. Hi, my name is Katie McMaster. I'm from Ottawa, Ontario. This is my guide dog, Matilda. She's a black lab and two years old. Um, since having Matilda, she's made getting around obstacles way easier, which saves me a lot of time. One of our favorite things to do together is to go to my pole fitness studio. Hello, my name is Kaya Berg, and this is my guide dog, Irene. She's a black lab golden retriever mix. I love to snuggle with her and play with her, and she also gives me the confidence that I need to go walking by myself and talk to the people in stores that can help me through things. Hi, I'm Keaton Hamilton. I'm in grade five and 11 years old. I live in Newmarket, Ontario. Indy, he is a golden retriever mixed with a black lab. However, he looks more like a black Labrador. Come. Indy approaches Keaton and obediently follows his commands. Sit. Good boy. Indy is rewarded with food. Indy down. Indy lays at Keaton's feet. Hello, my name is Marc Saint-Ange from Longueuil on the south shore of Montreal, Quebec, and this is Magic, my new guide dog. Magic is a yellow Labrador retriever. Uh, we have been matched together since May of 2021. As someone traveling uh, on a regular basis in new places, I would say that Magic improved my quality of life positively. Uh, she's very good to find things such as elevators, stairs, doors, and uh, it's like if she's able to analyze the environment before guiding me to a specific place. There's no doubt that an army is needed to train a guide dog. And I would like to say a special thank you to everyone involved in the process, guide, dog, guide dogs instructors, trainers, admin staff, but a very special thanks to Magic's Poppy Razor and Border. You guys are all fantastic. Thank you very much for your good work. Hi, my name is Megan Miller. I live in Brantford, Ontario, and this is my guide dog, Willie. He is a black Labrador retriever. Since getting Willie, I have been able to navigate my university campus independently and with confidence. Willie and I love to explore new places together and go on adventures. Willie is such a sweet, energetic, and enthusiastic boy. He is honestly a perfect match for me. I would like to thank CNIB Guide Dogs for bringing Willie into my life. He is incredibly special. Hi, my name is Mike Fulton, coming to you from beautiful Vancouver, BC. I'm here with my black Labrador Retriever guide dog, Eric. We've been together just coming up on nine months now, and it's been absolutely amazing since day one. He's the most fantastic, happy-go-lucky guy you ever want to meet. Uh, makes my life definitely easier. Can get out, get to all the things I need to do. And uh, just having a constant battle buddy with me is uh, makes my life perfect. I smile every day. Just want to make a point of uh, thanking all of Eric's trainers and puppy raisers that raised such an amazing dog. and. Uh, can't thank you guys enough. Hi, my name is Rylan Ross. I'm talking to you from London, Ontario, and this is my guide dog, Belle. She's a yellow golden lab retriever mix. Since being matched with Belle, I felt a lot more comfortable going out in the neighborhood and especially in crowded areas. We both enjoy going on trails and watching the London Knights hockey game together. Since being matched with her, I can't imagine my life without her. Hi, my name is Taylor Bauer, and I'm speaking to you from Leduc, Alberta, and this is my guide dog, Wallace. He is a Black Lab Golden Retriever Cross and a 100% good boy. I just love him so much. He's changed my life since the day I met him. You know, I used to always be worried and anxious when I was navigating and you know, going about my daily life, but now I can just sit back and enjoy the ride. I just have to trust him and he keeps me safe. And I love him for that. Caption, Samantha and CNIB guide dog, Roquette. 50th guide dog team training session. Photos show Samantha and Roquette together on a snowy path. 
Rocket is equipped with a leash, handled body harness, and dog shoes. Next, Rocket guides Samantha down an active sidewalk along an urban street. They approach an intersection and Rocket pauses at the curb. Samantha signals her forward and they safely cross. On the other side, they stop and turn to the adjacent crosswalk as cars pass through the intersection. Samantha gives an encouraging pet and talks with the training team as they wait for the lights to change. Photos show Samantha and Rocket outside a building entrance. Then, at the intersection, the lights change and Samantha signals Rocket forward. As they arrive safely on the other side, Rocket pauses to wait for direction. Samantha signals a left turn and they continue down the sidewalk. Later, they walk another sidewalk and approach an intersecting footpath. Rocket pauses before Samantha signals down the path. Rocket then leads her to the side entrance of a building and is rewarded with a pet. Next, they return down the footpath towards the sidewalk. Rocket stops at the intersection and they wait patiently as a fire truck races past. Samantha and Rocket continue down another snowy sidewalk, and Rocket makes room for an oncoming pedestrian. They stop at the curb and Samantha gives an encouraging pat. Right. Samantha signals the right turn and Rocket leads them down the sidewalk. Various photos show Samantha and Rocket together traveling a sidewalk, passing a city bus, posing with a training team, and touching noses on a footpath. Another portrait-style photo shows Samantha with a big smile as she poses with Rocket. Ben Mulroney. There are many ways that individuals contribute to the success of CNIB Guide Dogs. One of our signature events is our CNIB Pup Crawl. Here is this year's race director, Flynn, a CNIB buddy dog, to tell us more. A talking dog. Hi, everyone. It's time to lace up your running shoes. We're at it again for the third annual Pup Crawl, in support of CNIB Guide Dogs. Last year's second pup crawl was a tremendous success with more than 300 participants raising over $100,000. With your help, we're hoping to top that this year. Registration is open now and you have until May 25th to sign up and complete the virtual race. However you choose, walk, jog, run, dance, skip, or crawl. Of course, be sure to always practice physical distancing when completing your five kilometer race. The cost of registration is only $40, with all the proceeds going towards CNIB Guide Dogs in communities across Canada. You will also have the option to donate or collect pledges. Register today at cnib.ca forward slash pup crawl. And don't forget to take your pup with you if you have one. We want to participate too. Thanks, Flynn. I've already laced up my sneakers. I am ready for the challenge. Once again, congratulations to all of the graduates, puppy raisers, boarders, donors, supporters, funders, partners, and of course, the CNIB Guide Dogs team. Thank you to the planning committee for asking me to MC. It has been a pleasure and an honor. As we close today's graduation ceremony, here's a short video of some of today's graduates sharing some of their memories with their new partners. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you next year. A photo montage of the graduates and their partners. Abigail poses and hugs Lindsay. 
A dog wears a vest that reads, Future Guide Dog. Jennifer with her guide dog, Bonnie. Joshua walks the sidewalk with his buddy dog, Felix. Julien in the backyard with his buddy dog, Victor. Two dogs carry a large stick together in the water. Kaya walks the sidewalk with her guide dog, Irene. Keaton poses with his mother and Indy in a park. A man and his dog give kisses on a beach. Mark poses on a snowy sidewalk with his guide dog, Magic. Megan with her guide dog, Willie. Rylan walks the shopping center with Belle. Samantha and Rockette travel a snowy sidewalk. Taylor kneels and smiles with her guide dog, Wallace. Logo, CNIB Guide Dogs. Caption, congratulations to our 2022 graduates.